Good evening, everyone. Random Canuck here. Okay, so we have our two contestants for the 2022 Grey Cup uh, coming up next week from Regina. And I have to admit, it wasn't really the matchup that I wanted. Um, it, it's, it's the result that I thought would happen, but it wasn't really the matchup I predicted nor wanted. Uh, so it's going to be the Winnipeg Blue Bombers versus the Toronto Argonauts in the 2022 Grey Cup uh, as both teams punch their ticket uh, today. So let's go over the games uh, and what happened, starting off with the Argonauts winning 34-27 to against the Montreal Alouettes. Now, one thing I will say is, compared to any other season that I've been watching CFL football, like really watching it, and I know I said previously that I didn't see a lot of games this season, but... Even though I didn't, but I still did watch a few, I've really noticed that you can easily tell who the good teams are and who aren't this year. I, I really could see that, especially in the East Division and, and also in the West, but mostly in the East. Um, it, yeah, the Argos win by a score of 34-27 to 27, uh, over the uh, Montreal Alouettes. Um, tough for the Montreal Alouettes. They were... They were you know they try they just were always two steps back the entire entire game uh they just came out flat they were down 14 to 3 after the first quarter and they just could never catch up um it was just one of those games where Toronto was just the better team and having home field advantage is huge uh it really is uh in the CFL playoffs i don't remember a time a home team actually losing uh, I think all the, yeah, all the home teams won in the playoffs this year. BC won at home. Hamilton won. No, Hamilton was on the road. Montreal won home. So all the home teams won in the playoffs. So it really is important to have uh, home field advantage for the playoffs. All right, so let's talk about this game. Uh, Trevor Harris for Montreal threw for only 362 passing yards. Uh, McLeod Bethel Thompson only 299. So it wasn't really um, the passing game for Toronto that did it for him. It was the running game. Uh, Andrew Harris ran for 42 yards. William Steinbach for for uh, uh, Montreal 84 yards. Um, let me just see. Andrew Harris. Oh, additional player details not available for this league. Oh, okay, that's great. Um let me just see. Okay, well, that, you know what? Let me just try the box score. There we go. Um, Andrew Harris, nine attempts for 42 yards. Uh, Ouellette, yeah. Ouellette for running, the, the other running back for, for Toronto, six attempts for 38 yards. So those were the, the two big uh, one-two punch for Toronto today. Uh, receiving uh, Phil Pot, 127 yards receiving for Montreal. Daniels, 108 yards for Toronto. First downs totally favored Toronto, 25 to 19. Passing yards, 347 for the Montreal Alouettes, 345 for Toronto. So only two yards difference there. But it was the rushing yards that just dominated for Toronto. Total rushing yards, uh, 92 for Montreal, 101 for Toronto and it in the next game as well that I'll talk about it was more of the same total yards 446 for the winning Toronto Argonauts only 439 for the Montreal Alouettes time of possession actually favors Montreal by only a few seconds 30 minutes and 41 seconds for the Alouettes only 29 minutes and 19 seconds for Toronto but they they won the game only one turnover and that was uh Montreal, no turnovers for Toronto. All right, so we look at the scoring summary here. Uh, first quarter, Andrew Harris, six-yard touchdown run. Boris Beatty, extra point is good. Five and a half minutes into the first quarter. David Cote, 25-yard field goal. Uh, a few minutes later, uh, gets Montreal uh, on the board. A.J. Ouellette, seven-yard touchdown uh, pass from McLeod Bethel Thompson. Boris Beatty, extra point is good with Two minutes left in the first quarter. Uh, mid Early in the second, uh, Devaris Daniels, 46-yard touchdown pass from Chad Kelly. And this this was the play 
that really I could tell that Montreal wasn't going to win. It was a third or second down, and and Toronto looks like they're going to run it, you know, just get the inches, you know, get the first down. But instead, Montreal doesn't pay attention, and uh, DeVaris Daniels, uh, or sorry, Chad Kelly just goes a, oop, a little up and over and wide open, and Montreal, there was not an alouette in sight, and uh, DeVaris Daniels gets the touchdown. And at that point, I was like, yeah, Tr- Montreal's not winning this game. Uh, Tyson Philpott uh, gets a 36-yard touchdown pass from Trevor Harris, and De- uh, David Cote's extra point is good. Montreal gets back on the board. Boris Beattie gets a 13-yard field goal, 12 minutes in, about 12 and change into the to, into the second quarter, and then David Cote a 30-yard field goal with about uh, 14:45 into the second quarter, and we end the half there. Uh, early, early on in the third quarter, William Stan, uh, Standback 52-yard touchdown run. Uh, Tyson Philpot two-point conversion pass from Trevor Harris is good. Then we kind of have a game, and I got to thinking, okay, maybe Matrocha chewed these guys out in the halftime, and maybe they're going to get going. No. Uh, Boris Beattie, 35-yard field goal, uh, just about five minutes into the third quarter. Then David Cote, another field goal for Montreal, 32-yard field goal. And that's another. Th- that was the play there that I thought, and there was a couple of times that happened too. I thought Matrocha's play calling was not very good at certain times. Uh, when Montreal should have went for a touchdown because I knew they weren't going to get the ball back, uh, Matoche elected to go to the field goal. I felt that I thought that was very conservative coaching by Matoche. Uh, your life's your your season's on the line in the playoffs, and you got to get points. And I don't know, I would have been a lot more aggressive of a coach than Matoche was today, and I, I think that kind of cost them the game. Uh, Gittins. Junior, a 31-yard touchdown pass from McLeod Bethel Thompson. Boris Beattie extra point is good. Final play of the third quarter. And I was like, okay, game over. Montreal's done. And all the scoring that was done in the fourth quarter was a David Cote Montreal field goal, 35 yards, 10 minutes, 53 seconds and change. And that's how the game finished, 34-27 in favor of the Toronto Argonauts. And they will travel to Regina to play in the Grey Cup next Sunday. Now, let's talk about... Yeah, so I want to just go back um, and talk about Montreal for a bit. Um, Yeah, I picked Winnipeg versus Montreal was my prediction before the playoffs. And if you want to go back and and, uh, watch that video, feel free to. Um, I like what Montreal's future is. Uh, Machocha did say this is his last... He is not coaching next season. Uh, So be interesting to see who they hire as head coach next season. And I kind of hope it's somebody new, not somebody from the same old, same old group. Um, I don't want them to hire Paul Appelese. I don't want them to hire Jim Barker. I don't want them to hire Bob Dice. No offense. These are all good football people. But um, I want new coaching in the CFL, new fresh head coaching. Hello, Calgary Stampeders. Yeah, we'd like to speak to Mark Killen, please. Uh, That's the coach I would hire. Montreal would be absolutely stupid not to. Um, again, though, like I've said before in previous videos, I don't think he wants to leave Calgary because I also think he's going to be Dave Dickinson's replacement when Dave Dickinson retires from the Calgary Stampeders coaching. And I think that's a little bit of ways yet. Um, but yeah, I like Montreal's uh, future going forward. Uh, it's just really important that they get the right head coach though. All right, moving on to the West. And even though the score was only by eight points, by no means was the BC Lions ever close, I think, in this game personally. Uh, For the third consecutive year in a row, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers are going to the Grey Cup. They are today's CFL's dynasty. Um, Yeah, they're just spectacular. 15-3 this season. And the weather definitely had a factor. BC just had no chance. Um, Although I do feel bad for Nathan Rourke, the quarterback. But he had a good game other than a few mix-ups near the end. Especially at the very end of the game where I'll talk about that. Excuse me, in a bit. Anyways, Rourke throws for exactly 300 passing yards. Uh, Collins, or excuse me, not Collins, Zach Caleros, only 178 passing yards. But again, because of the weather, they didn't do a lot of passing and they used their running backs in this game. Rushing, uh, Ol- Ol- um, Olvera for Winnipeg, 130 yards rushing, only 20 yards rushing. I believe Nathan Rourke was their leading rusher for BC. Yeah, Nathan Rourke was their leading rusher. 20 yards, uh, Butler and Pipkin. 
the backup quarterback. So BC's running back only had four yards rushing the entire game. You're not going to win playoff games in the CFL if you don't have a running game. Uh, receiving, Hatcher, 133 yards receiving for the BC Lions. Nick Dembski, 74 yards rushing. Uh, f- uh, or excuse me, receiving for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Sorry, I'm a little tired from last night's Sawyer Brown concert. Um, I'll talk, well, I'll just quickly say that I'm not posting any video of that on my channel. I don't want to get my channel uh, flagged or anything for any copyright issues or anything, but I will say it was the best concert I've ever seen. I've only seen three concerts two of, in my lifetime. Two of those were George Strait, uh, Sawyer Brown, my favorite country music band. Uh, totally blew it out of the water last night, so I had a great time. So that's all I'm going to talk about that. Back to football. So first downs, uh, favor Winnipeg, 1914. Passing yards, uh, favor BC, 285 to 188. Uh, rushing yards, definitely favor Winnipeg, 173 to 28. Only 28 rushing yards the entire game for the BC Lions. Absolutely pathetic. Uh, total yards favor Winnipeg, 361 to 313 for BC. Time of possession, all Winnipeg, 34 minutes, 57 seconds for BC. They only had 25 minutes and 3 seconds with the football. Three turnovers for the BC Lions, only two for the Winnipeg Bull Bombers. Scoring summary, uh, Dalton Schoen, a 19-yard touchdown pass from Zach Kalaros. Extra point is good. Winnipeg is on the board. Antonio Pipkin gets a two-yard run touchdown, from, and Sean White's extra point is good. And I thought, oh, interesting. Maybe BC's going to play spoiler. No, not at all. Uh, that really was the only shining part, I thought, for, for BC in the early going. Uh, then nine minutes into the first quarter, Mark Leggetto, or Leggio, or Leggio, 44-yard field goal. Winnipeg leads after one. In the second quarter, about five minutes in, uh, uh, Jerron Grant, 74-yard punt return. Uh, extra point is good. That that was the play where that was the point in the game where I thought, yeah, Winnipeg's gonna put the boots to him here. It, it's that was the turning point. And in some ways, it really was. Uh, Stefan uh, Fintot, 56-yard single. Or, yeah, Flynn, Lin, Flintoft. Sorry, Flintoft, I believe his name. 56-yard extra point single. Or, sorry, <laughs> punt single. Uh, then Mark uh, Legrano, or Legrano. Uh, I'm butchering these names, I can tell. 24-yard field goal. Final play of the first half for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Third quarter, all BC could muster up was field goals, uh, early on anyways. Uh, Sean White, 42-yard field goal is good, a minute 49 into the first, second half. Dakota Prokop, a one-yard touchdown run, uh, extra point attempt is no good for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Then Terry Williams, an extra point return for a TD, um, and that was only two points. I kind of think that should count as a touchdown or at least get four points or something. I just think, because he went from all the way one side to the other, and I think only getting two points for that incredible effort is a bit of a ripoff. Uh, beginning of the fourth quarter, uh, Legeno, 16-yard field goal, and, and that pretty much seals it for the Blue Bombers at that point. Alexander uh, Holens, a 14-yard touchdown pass from Nathan Rourke, and Sean White, extra point attempt is good, but it was too little too late for the BC Lions as they fall in the Western Division Final 28-20 to to the two-time defending Grey Cup champions, the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And the Winnipeg Blue Bombers now try and go for the three-peat against the Toronto Argonauts next Sunday in Regina, Saskatchewan at the 109th Grey Cup. Um, so there was one big mix-up at the end I want to talk about with BC. Uh, because the crowd was so loud, Nathan Rourke could not there was just terrible communication, and I believe there was about 30 seconds on the clock, and BC wasted all that time. I think they did one play, and then there was, like, no time on the clock. Had BC would have had better, better um, communication, and maybe if Nathan Rourke was more, excuse me, more um, experienced, I think maybe they could have, maybe they would have gotten a touchdown and tied that game up with a... Uh, with an extra point, if that's all they would have had to do, or no, two pointer. Sorry, a two pointer because they were down, um, you know, by 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 a full touchdown, and a two pointer. I, I just I felt so bad watching Nathan Rourke. Like he was crying. The team were consoling. Like I actually felt really bad for him. But you know what? He's a rookie. He's he's gonna learn these things. 
and props to him, uh, him and Coach Rick Campbell watching the uh, Western Division presentation trophy or the trophy presentation uh, with the Blue Bombers because I think that's really going to fuel Nathan Rourke up for next season. Um, I don't think Nathan Rourke was 100% healthy at all. I think he still had that injury lingering around. Um, so good on him for literally playing in this game to begin with. Um, as far as Winnipeg goes, I, I think they're going to win the Grey Cup. Um, however, Toronto's got some... It's the top two teams from each division, but really Winnipeg is the class of the CFL. They were 15-3 and three for a reason. Um, I, I But there was an issue... Late in the game, and I don't know why Mike O'Shea let Kalaros keep playing. There was a play like only with a few minutes left, a few seconds maybe, and Kalaros gets hit and sacked and comes up limping pretty noticeably. And I thought, oh man, if Kalaros cannot play in the Grey Cup, Toronto could win it. If Kalaros is, is, is hurt and he can't play, there is a chance Toronto could make it. Um, I think Toronto's going to have the better running game. I think they're going to do more of the same next week against Winnipeg. But I just think in the end, Winnipeg's been there before. They know what to do. Um, they're gunning for the third Grey Cup in a row. I think Mike O'Shea is going to outcoach Ryan Dinwiddie and the Toronto Argonauts. But we don't know. It is one game. Weather could play a factor. Um, a drop, uh, a fumble, uh, a sack, an interception... Um, penalties, anything could totally change an outcome of the game. Uh, but I just think overall, Winnipeg's going to win the Grey Cup. Um, and I and I did. If it would have been now, I will say this: had Montreal would have won, I still think Winnipeg would have won the Grey Cup. But I would have been going for Montreal. I would have been going for the underdog Montreal Oets. But because it's Toronto, I am going for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers and hoping that they complete the three peat, and then. After that, I kind of hope their their fun in the sun is done and they can, you know, I think I'm sure there'll be changes um, and that team will probably go through some changes. And I think BC could be the team that takes them, overtakes them. Uh, Edmonton's still got still a bad football team. Saskatchewan looks bad. Calgary's on the way down. Um, yeah, I just, I just think, yeah, so there's Winnipeg, BC, Calgary, Edmonton. I'm forgetting someone. Edmonton, or sorry, BC, Edmonton, Calgary, Saskatchewan, Winnipeg. There, yeah. So I think after next season, I I think it'll be hard to if 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 Winnipeg does complete the three peat, um, I I think they'll go through some changes, and I could see a team. I could see the BC Lions being the team that takes over after Winnipeg because Edmonton's still going to be pretty bad. Uh, Calgary, I think, is on the way down. Um, Saskatchewan, I don't know what they're going to be like. And so I think BC is going to be that team. Uh, in the East, hard to say because the East is so bad. Um, Hamilton, I think, needs to go through a rebuild. I think Hamilton's going to be near the bottom. Um, Ottawa, I think, I hope they do better next season. I, I don't think they'll end up last. I think Montreal could be the team that takes over from Toronto, but we don't know. Maybe Toronto's window is just opening, and that's a very high possibility. Um, the East is just really hard to predict right now more than the West. So, And, and you know, there's still free agency to go through in, in, in February, so uh, that can totally change the landscape of the CFL too. Like, where is Bo Levi Mitchell going to go? Saskatchewan. Yeah, we know he's probably going to end up in Saskatchewan. So hard to say. Uh, anyway, so there you have it. There is your recap of the 2022 East-West Division Final in the CFL Grey Cup Playoffs. I will be back uh, next Sunday, uh, Grey Cup Day, to do a preview. Um, I think I made a note to do a preview. It, it, the preview may or may not happen. I am having a, my Grey Cup party with some friends, so the, the, the preview might be an up-in-the-air kind of thing. I, I do have it written down, I believe, in my notes here. Uh, yeah, Grey Cup preview on the morning. Maybe I will do that and just kind of have a talk and just kind of see how I feel that morning. Um, and who knows, like I said, if Kalaros can't go, Winnipeg's in trouble. Like, they are. Like, they have an okay backup quarterback, but he's not Chris Strebler. Um, and then, of course, I'll be doing my Grey Cup review. I, uh, mon the, the, the Monday morning, because I know I'll be hanging out with friends and, and that on Grey Cup night, so... 
Uh, depending on how late it goes. If it's not late, then I might do the review Sunday night, but if not, it'll be the, the following morning. So um, apologies for not having many videos done last done last week. Um, it was just one of those weeks where things kind of just happened and I didn't really get any ideas. So, um, but that's just the way it goes sometimes. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. This has been The Random Canuck. Uh, let me know in the comments who you think uh, or what you thought of the uh, the divisional final games today. Um, like I said at the beginning, not surprised by what the matchup is. It's not the matchup I wanted. Um, I'm just kind of now because it's Toronto. Uh, once Toronto won, I was like, okay, well, I'm going for BC or Winnipeg. You know, I just don't cheer for Toronto. So um, I... I was hoping Montreal was going to go on a run. They they kind of did, but then they ran into Toronto, and, you know, that's what happened. So, anyways, thanks so much for watching. Have a great night, everyone. We will talk to you again down the road. This has been the Random Canuck. Bye for now.